I've been scouring Facebook Marketplace for a budget-friendly computer to turn into a Hackintosh, and let me tell you, there's no shortage of mini PCs out there. But one listing stopped me in my tracks. An Acer CXi4 Chromebox. This little guy was packing some serious heat for the price. A 10th Gen Intel Core i7, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, a 128GB NVMe SSD, and even an Intel Wi-Fi 6AX201 card. I mean, come on, that's a steal. So, in true tinkerer fashion, I started wondering if I could transform this lockdown Chromebox into a full-blown Hackintosh. Spoiler alert! It's not your average mini PC, and this journey got wild. Before diving into the Hackintoshing, I powered it up to see what I was working with. The system booted into Windows 10 without a hitch, and I was pleasantly surprised to see. The boot up is nice, but I was here for the Hackintosh, so it was time to get serious. First off, if you're not familiar with Chromeboxes, they're basically Chromebooks without the screen or keyboard. Just a compact box running Chrome OS, which is essentially Google Chrome with a file browser. They're locked down tight with custom firmware, so you can't just slap Mac OS, Windows, or Linux on them out of the box. If you still have Chrome OS installed, you need to flash the firmware. The Mr. Chromebox.tech site is loaded with warnings, and for good reason. Mess this up, and you could brick your Chromebox, leaving it useful only as a paperweight unless you've got a chip programmer handy. The site offers two firmware options, a legacy firmware that lets you dual-boot Chrome OS and another OS, or a full UEFI ROM that wipes Chrome OS entirely and turns the Chromebox into a standard PC. Since my computer was already running Windows 10, I visited the GitHub repository to download the Opcore Simplify tool. After locating the appropriate release, I downloaded the archive file containing the tool. Once the download was complete, I extracted the contents of the archive to a designated folder on my system. To execute the tool, I navigated to the extracted folder and ran the opcoresimplify.bat batch file by double-clicking it, which initiated the program's operations. After running the hardware sniffer tool to assess whether my system's hardware is fully compatible with macOS, the results displayed in light blue text indicated that my hardware is capable of running macOS Tahoe. The SD controller is typically unsupported on macOS, so that's not a surprise at all. Based on this, I chose to proceed with generating an EFI configuration using Tahoe as the baseline. As a precautionary measure, I plan to create a separate EFI configuration for macOS Sequoia as a fallback option in case Tahoe encounters issues or fails to run properly on my system. Since I'm in an experimental phase, I'm prepared to test both configurations to determine the most stable and compatible setup for my hardware. After the EFI configurations were successfully generated, I organized them by renaming the respective folders to clearly distinguish between the two versions. I labeled one folder Sequoia for the macOS Sequoia EFI and the other Tahoe for the macOS Tahoe EFI, ensuring easy identification for my ongoing experimentation and testing on my Windows 10 system. Next, I prepared my drive for the macOS Tahoe installation by allocating 60 gigabytes of free space. Using a disk management tool on my Windows 10 system, I carefully partitioned the drive to create an unallocated space of 60 gigabytes, which will serve as the dedicated partition for installing macOS Tahoe, ensuring sufficient room for the operating system and related files while keeping my experimentation organized. I downloaded and launched Disk Genius on my Windows 10 system to further prepare my drive for the macOS Tahoe installation. Using the tool, I created a dedicated EFI partition on the 60 gigabytes free space I had previously allocated. Once the EFI partition was set up, I copied the Tahoe EFI folder, which I had previously generated and renamed, into this newly created EFI partition, ensuring that the necessary boot files for macOS Tahoe were properly placed for the next steps of my experimentation. I used Disk Genius to configure the UEFI settings on my Windows 10 system, specifically adding the OpenCore bootloader to the UEFI boot options. By setting up OpenCore in the UEFI settings, I ensured that my system would boot directly into the OpenCore bootloader upon restarting, streamlining the process for launching macOS Tahoe. This approach was necessary because the BIOS settings on my Acer system are limited, offering minimal options for customization, making the Disk Genius method a practical solution for managing the boot process during my experimentation. I proceeded to restore the RDR file for macOS Tahoe using a suitable tool on my Windows 10 system. I selected the 60GB unallocated space I had previously prepared as the target for the restoration process, ensuring that the macOS Tahoe system image was correctly written to the designated partition. This step completed the setup of the macOS Tahoe installation, 
readying it for booting via the OpenCore bootloader configured in my UEFI settings, as part of my ongoing experimentation. After the restoration succeeded, time to do a reboot. Upon rebooting my system, it successfully loaded the OpenCore boot picker as configured. From the boot picker, I selected the macOS Tahoe partition to initiate the installation process. After a lengthy sequence of scrolling text, the system displayed an error message indicating waiting for root device, suggesting an issue with the configuration, likely related to the EFI setup or hardware compatibility. To troubleshoot, I rebooted the system back into Windows 10 to investigate potential solutions, such as checking the open core configuration, verifying the EFI partition setup, or ensuring proper driver and KEX inclusion for my hardware. I did some research and discovered a comprehensive resource called the Krultrabook website, which provides detailed guides for installing Windows, Linux, and macOS on Chrome OS devices. According to the guide, installing macOS on a Chromebook requires flashing a custom BIOS firmware, such as Core Boot, to replace the stock Chrome OS firmware, enabling full compatibility with macOS. This process is typically performed on a Linux system, but I learned that it can be done using a live Linux environment, which is convenient for my setup. To proceed, I decided to use Ventui to create a bootable USB drive with Linux Mint XFCE, a lightweight Linux distribution ideal for running a live session. Using the Linux Mint XFCE live environment, I can execute the necessary commands outlined in the Krultrabook guide to generate and flash a custom BIOS firmware tailored for macOS compatibility on my Chromebook. This approach avoids the need for a dedicated Linux installation and aligns with my experimental workflow on my Windows 10 system, allowing me to address the configuration issue that caused the earlier error and continue my efforts to boot macOS Tahoe successfully. I followed some pointers gained from my research on the Krultrabook website. To resolve the issue, I edited the config.plist file in the OpenCore EFI folder for the Sequoia configuration. Specifically, I enabled the disable virtualize Mio quirk in the OpenCore configuration to fix issues related to NVRAM and other runtime EFI services, which could be causing the boot failure. Additionally, I added the Emerald SDHC.kext, an EMMC driver, to the OpenCore setup to ensure proper recognition and functionality of my Chromebook's EMMC storage, which is likely critical for macOS to detect the root device correctly. These modifications were made to address the hardware compatibility issues indicated by the error. After modifying the OpenCore configuration for macOS Tahoe and still facing potential issues, I decided to pivot to macOS Sequoia, suspecting that Tahoe's beta status might be contributing to the waiting for root device error or other boot-related problems. Using a suitable tool on my Windows 10 system, I restored the macOS Sequoia RDR file to the 60GB unallocated space I had previously prepared, targeting the same partition originally intended for Tahoe. Once the restoration was complete, I copied the edited Sequoia EFI folder, which included the disabled virtualize Mio quirk and the Emerald SDHC.kext EMMC driver as configured earlier, into the corresponding EFI partition on my Hackintosh setup. This ensured that the Sequoia installation would use the customized OpenCore bootloader settings tailored for my Chromebook's hardware, continuing my experimentation to achieve a successful macOS boot on my Acer system. Without making any further changes to the BIOS settings on my Acer system, I rebooted and selected the macOS Sequoia partition from the OpenCore boot picker. This time, the system successfully bypassed the waiting for root device error, likely due to the updated config.plist with the disabled virtualized Mio quirk and the addition of the Emerald SDHC.kext EMMC driver in the Sequoia EFI folder. The boot process progressed smoothly, landing on the macOS Sequoia welcome screen, where I proceeded with the setup process to configure the operating system. This marked a successful milestone in my experimentation, achieving a booting macOS Sequoia installation on my Chromebook-based Hackintosh. So here we are on the welcome screen with some various languages that greeted you, Typically we will likely need to configure standard macOS settings like language, region, Wi-Fi, Apple ID, and user account creation. After successfully setting up macOS Sequoia on my Chromebox-based Hackintosh and observing its performance, I noticed two significant issues. First, the Intel UHD GPU is only reporting 7 megabytes of VRAM, indicating a lack of proper graphics acceleration, which results in sluggish performance and poor visual rendering. I attempted to resolve this by experimenting with various platform IDs in the OpenCore config.plist under the Device Properties section, specifically adjusting the platform ID for my Intel UHD GPU, but these changes did not fix the issue. As a last resort, I plan to use OpenCore Legacy Patcher, OCLP, to apply post-install root patches, which are designed to restore graphics acceleration for Intel iGPUs on unsupported systems. 
Second, I discovered that the onboard audio hardware of my Chromebox is not supported by macOS Sequoia, as it lacks a compatible audio controller. A common workaround for this issue is to use an external USB-based audio device. However, macOS is selective about hardware compatibility, and finding a suitable USB audio device can be challenging. Research suggests that USB audio devices with Realtek chipsets are generally well supported by macOS, often working out of the box or with minimal configuration via kexts like Apple ALC. So, was it worth it? For under $85, including shipping, absolutely. This Acer CXI4 went from a lockdown Chromebox to a versatile Hackintosh that's perfect for macOS development, media streaming, or even a lightweight server. Sure, flashing the firmware was a bit nerve-wracking, and Hackintosh setups require some elbow grease, but the payoff is a powerful, efficient, and dirt-cheap system that punches way above its price tag. If you're into repurposing tech and don't mind a challenge, this is a project worth tackling. Just make sure you read the docs, double-check your model, and maybe pick up a spare motherboard in case things go sideways. Stay curious, and see you on the next one.